Hi folks, it's Switchback. If you have wondered how to wash a water reservoir, then today is your lucky day. Some can go in the top rack of your dishwasher. How that works is beyond me, but kudos and points to you if you make that work. You can buy a tab that's specific for washing out a hydration reservoir, follow the directions on the pack. Basically you just add the tab and some water to the reservoir, drain out the air, mix it up, let it sit for the time allotted, and then empty it, rinse it out. If you wanna do a more manual cleaning, which is what I typically do, you can use a cleaning kit or you can just use a bottle brush. Uh, some people use a piece of paracord with a knot tied in the end to pull through the hose to clean it. One of the things that I like about the brush that comes with the cleaning kit versus a bottle brush is that it's narrower, so it's gonna fit into those little sections a little bit better that are in, for example, my Osprey bladder. But if yours does not have sections, for example, camelbacks usually don't, then a bottle brush will do you just fine. <laughs> I am. Uh... <laughs> There are a variety of cleaning kits on the market. I have had mine for years, so it's probably changed exactly what is in them now. But mine came with a brush and this to clean the hose. I like to get this a little bit wet, put a little soap on it. It actually fits quite nicely just doing that, and that's plenty of soap. And then. it in, pull it out, you can kind of scrub depending on how funky it is. Empty out your bladder, you can feel that it's a little slimy, definitely time to clean this pepper out. I pull off the connector so that I can actually clean inside there. It's also nice because then you can swap what side it's on, depending on what works better for you, how you wear your pack. Now, to be honest, I don't clean it every time, but I do clean it periodically. And sometimes this will be pretty funky. <laughs> and then I can clean inside here. Next, get the brush a little wet. Just put a very tiny amount of dish soap on there. It doesn't take much for the first several sips to taste like dish soap. You have to make sure that you rinse it well, but you also don't wanna use more soap than necessary. So I will brush along the bottom here. And again, this one has different sections inside of it kind of see there. So I make sure that I push the brush around all three sections, scrub. And I want to scrub all the corners here in the top. Scrub along there. I'll even scrub under here because obviously it gets a little gross, but thankfully that doesn't really come into direct contact with anything I'm drinking. It's not the worst idea to get the exterior periodically, but I really honestly don't do it that often. Next, rinse it on out. I use lukewarm water for this. You can use hot water. I would not use cold because it really won't get all the soap flavor off. And I rinse it until I stop seeing suds. I'm not really seeing any suds at this point. And I wanna make sure again, I rinse all those little corners and such. All right. We'll get into how to dry it too, don't worry. So I could just wash off the exterior here and definitely wanna get inside of the mouthpiece. If you have a cap on it, I love having this little cap because if I sit my pack down and, and the mouthpiece touches the dirt, it's just inevitable. So it's pretty nice to have that. Sometimes the magnet will get a bunch of metal deposits on it from the dirt too, so keep that in mind. And then to clean, rinse out the hose, you shouldn't need a ton of water going at once. 
but pinch the mouthpiece so that it will actually flow through like that. If you have a cap, make sure that you rinse it out too. This piece. I would like to clean out the mouthpiece today, so we're gonna do that. So I move the magnet. I like to keep the magnet up where it's connected to the hose because then it doesn't slide around so much. So I'm going to move that down. You might need a towel if your hands are wet to hold onto the hose and just pull the mouthpiece out. So there are actually three different pieces to this mouthpiece. The red piece, this little clear piece, and then the gray and clear here. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off like that and you can see that. And then this can actually get pushed out. <laughs> Just as simple as that, folks. But if your little piece of silicone here springs a leak, mine has done that a few times, uh, you can actually buy replacement kits for that. It gets moldy, you can do the same thing. But I recommend clearing it out periodically so that that doesn't happen. So you can use this, clean the inside of that, clean the inside of this. You can clean in here. You can clean that. And then this actually even has little spots that it's good to be able to get through here. You can even use the end of the bottle brush for getting in here. All right. Different brands have different recommendations of what to do if it starts to taste funny. And often when you first buy them, they taste a little weird anyway. Osprey recommends that you squeeze a little bit of lemon into the bladder. You fill it about three quarters of the way with some warm water, move that around, put it in the freezer. And then after it's totally frozen, you thaw it back out, rinse, call it good. Camelback recommends that you use one tablespoon of baking soda. Again, three quarters of the way filled with warm water. Swish it around, let it sit for 40 to 60 minutes, drain and rinse thoroughly. Before you store a hydration reservoir, let it dry completely. Yes, this takes forever. Now that we're here in the drain board, I will use some kind of a cooking implement to prop this up and open usually, like a spoon or a whisk. I think I'm going to use the spoon today. And then I can just prop it up. But this way I can let everything dry. It will still take a few days, just how it goes. But having the little other pieces out does help speed things along a bit. Do not pour boiling water into a reservoir and do not put it into the freezer completely full of water because remember that water expands when it freezes. Now for the big question, should you freeze a hydration pack? Yes, you can absolutely do this, especially if you don't want to have to wait around for it to dry completely, but there's definitely no harm if you do it and it can be a good way to keep your hydration reservoir safe. If you want to know how to fill your hydration reservoir without taking it out of your backpack, then you should check out this video right up here. Thank you so much for watching. Bye. Squeeze a little bit of lemon. <laughs> Dog life. Told you I wash Ziplocs. <laughs>